Okay, perfect. So thank you uh, for joining the call today. I understand that um, I'll, I'll introduce myself. My name is Raylan Kishpa, and I'm the Director of Customer Success here at Medireg. So that means my job is to build products and then launch them and then train you on them to make sure that we're helping you do your job. And what we're going to show you today is a coding suite product called the Audit and Revenue Resource Center. And my understanding is that we're showing this to a team of folks who've already had access to the product, as well as some new hires, primarily coders and billing professionals from the California um, offices. And um, it, definitely if it's noisy where you are or you were causing our, our echoes, you should keep your on mute. But I really want you to get what you need out of our call today. Mama, unmute you your phone. I'm sorry. So somebody just... Could someone please mute their phone? Who is speaking in the background? Thank I'm you. Um, but I do want to encourage you to go ahead and take yourself off mute if you have a question or you'd like to direct me to a particular location. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. <clears throat> this is the front screen when you first log into the Audit and Revenue Resource Center. And Lori was talking about... Perfect. Okay, so... Um, Lori was discussing the idea that some folks feel like their daily alerts are too big. So I want to show you how to fix that, and then we're going to do a behind-the-scenes fix, but you want to go ahead and tweak your own account as well. To show you what's in the Audit and Revenue Resource Center, I'm going to go to Browse Content on the left-hand side. And there you see our nice folder view that gives us a sense of the breadth and depth of content that you have accessible. If I were billing, coding, or audit, what I would think would be important content would be this library called Guidance for Coders. And pretty much I like everything up above there uh, so that I can keep a sense of what's going on in the industry. Then scroll down, we have topic libraries. And depending on what kind of coding or billing work you do, you might decide to keep on or off the outpatient, the drug, the quality library. That's really up to you. And then we have two kinds of state libraries. Actually click in so you can see these concretely. If you click into the library that says State Contractor LCDs and Bulletins, that's what it is. This is where you do your medical necessity research. And it includes the coverage articles, the LCDs, and the bulletins published by the Medicare Administrative Contractors who have jurisdiction in the state. And it also includes uh, four CMS collections that have coverage information that would apply to any state. Well, oh, there's not only mail field, but and average analyses. That was speaker 14. I'm going to go ahead and mute you too. Okay. Um, so that's what every single state library looks like, and you know what state you're working in. So if you tailor your page to only show the state that has the content you're interested in, you're going to find your experience as a product much more user friendly. So that's the first state library. The second state library contains the regulations, and really for coders, the important part is the Medicaid manual for that specific state. And again, what state you're in, so you don't need all 50 of them turned on. You can just turn on the one or two where you're doing work. So let me show you how you do that. When you subscribe to Medireg, the very first thing you should do is log in. And over here on the Welcome tab, under Settings, click on the button that says Tailor Your Page, and then turn off any of the resources that would feel like clutter to you. So you might decide to turn off press releases and fact sheets. You might to turn off the contract, the, uh, the coding libraries that go backwards in time because search can be quite cumbersome. We give you all the Medicare manuals, but you may decide to just keep on the guidance for coders and turn off the Medicare manuals because there's so many manuals and the good ones are in the guidance library anyway. I encourage you to keep the OIG library on. And I know as coders we want to just stay focused and get our job done, but we are all responsible for fraud and abuse. And the OIG tells us what other folks are doing wrong, and they have these fantastic reports that say that an investigation has occurred, 
and this particular organization had a bad billing practice. And I'll show you how to do something called a stored search alert. And if you key OIG library on, your personal alerts might let you know that in an area that's important to you, the OE has had some audit activity, and that really is just going to bump up your expertise. So then I'm going to just decide for yourself, based on the titles of these libraries, which ones are important. I can't absolutely, like you suggested, Flory, go and create a prototype user and clone that onto everybody. And I'll have you do that. I'm going to create all kinds of stuff. Okay. Thank you for that. Then you're going to go down to the state contractor's well, library, and we did give you an uncheck all, and then turn on just the state that you need. And I'm going to California today just for consistency. Scroll, scroll uncheck all, California. Okay. Um, uh, may, we, no, up here. may we remind someone who has their phone unmuted that we're hearing your conversation over the presenter? Thank you for that. Welcome. And Ray, and one other thing, if, I, if a person goes in initially and turns off a particular feature, are they able to go back in, I believe they are, and yes. later turn it down? So this is yep. not a permanent elimination decision. I, you're not deleting content from our server. <laughs> yep. And you can access restore it. alerts as, this as is needed. For searching. It's searching and for daily alerts. So you're customizing your version of Medireg, but we're still giving access to the entire set of content. Let me click Submit and show you what I just shifted. So I'm going to come in, my page, uncheck the junk that isn't, it's, it's important stuff to somebody, but it's not for, for my job. And then I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to click Submit. And now I'll show you what I just changed. When I go to browse content, instead of 150 folders, I have 20. That means my searches are more relevant. And it means, in this case, when I search, I'm only searching California. Now, just a little confusing, I will note that on Ray's account, I have added some MedLearn titles and some CCH and Aspen content, so I have some additional content that you won't see. You'll be just above that additional content. So we can tailor the page, get the primary source material that you need, get rid of the stuff that you don't need, and it makes browsing and searching better. But it, most importantly, this daily email alert that we've been sending you is based on your tailored page. So if I go back now a, few, a week or two and see what these alerts would have looked like on days, you can see that they're much more precise. I will state that even if you get yourself down to one individual Mac library, one state, you still see a lot of activity because it's the fall. And the Mac have to update all their policies for the forthcoming CPT codes. Plus, they all released a bunch of ICD-10 LCDs then they have to tell everybody that there's a delay. So you're going to see a lot of extra content in the coverage articles and the LCDs right now, but at least you'll only see it for one state instead of 50 states. And you'll also notice we asked our engineers to move these to a Saturday build so that you keep your Monday through Friday emails a little bit more reasonable. So you'll, you'll see that. Um, so your alert your daily alerts immediately get much better when you tailor your page. You tailor your page on the front screen. And I'm going to send you a training guideline that, that gives you links to related information of everything I'm talking about today. And there's actually a tailoring page guide on that um, so you can read up on that if you want. Now, in addition to tailored page, there are two other kinds of alerts. One that's global and one that's customized. And I really want you to understand the customized one because it's going to really make your better and you're going to love Medireg's once you set up some of your own custom alerts. So under alerts, you see two kinds. What new is based on your tailored page. So since I only have a few uh, libraries on and there hasn't been much activity today, this is a small list. Yay. The other one is called Week in Review. And this is every single Sunday. We send it to you in your regular daily alert, and it's actually a newsletter that my team creates to make sure you didn't miss anything. So here's your, your opportunity to just kind of scroll through the history and see what transmittals, what OIG actions, what other kinds of juicy things happened last week that you might want to know 
grateful about. And it's good because you made your daily alert small, but you got this one to catch in case you miss anything. Now I want you to notice that some of the documents that appear both in the day and the weekly alert don't really tell you what they're about. Right? Look at these titles and you know if this is about radiology or pathology or surgical services or something that has nothing to do with your job. And so what I really like is for Medi-Regs to read their documents and send you the ones that matter, and, it, and you can ignore the ones that don't matter. That would be cool, right? right? So I'm going to do that. And this is, after you tailor your page, the second single most important thing you can do to love Medi-Reg. So I'm going to go to Special Searches, Browse Content, and Search Box at the top of the screen. That search box automatically searches this content. If I tailored my page, it's only about 20 libraries. If I tailor my page, it would be 150 libraries, and my search results would be very frustrating. But let's say I keep up with, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to cheat for a second. And I'm going to go into the HIPPICS and CPT code book, the new one, the one for 2015, because I just want to see what some of the new CPT codes are. So I'm going to just take a peek into Appendix B real quick, just a good search term. Um, so 20605, here's a nice code, was just added. And I'm going to use that code today in our discussion. Okay, so here's what I'm going to go to browse content and we search for 20605. And chances are, I'm not, well, it's probably a zip code too, isn't it? It's an arthrothesis code, so I'm going to put in an extra word. Let me, let me hit my back button a couple of times and just prove that myself again. I'm doing a lot less searching than browsing. I, I do tend to browse more in Medi-Regs. It's 2604. That's better. Uh, so I got hits, and I'm guessing some of these are zip codes because we have these old regulations. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Advanced Search instead, and I'm going to search there and off the Regulations Library just to get clutter out of my way. In fact, maybe I'll search the Guidance for Coders Library and the California State Library. See what I did? Advanced is quite powerful. It lets you search for up to three different search terms, connect them together, and it lets you target where your search is. So when I search for the CPT code, I'm not really finding much. I found the conventions in the brand new CPT book. That makes sense to me. And I found uh, a couple of old proposed rules, and that might be an anomaly. I'm very certain that in the next six weeks, a lot of information is going to show up about this code. There's going to be a CPT assistant article. There's going to be a CPT changes chapter section on this code. Uh, additional coding information is going to appear in the HIPPICS and CPT code book. Maybe Mac will issue a local coverage determination with this code on it. And certainly it's going to show up in things like the outpatient and physician fee schedule. Those have not yet been published, even though AMA has let us know that this code is new. So I want to know as soon as a brand new document appears containing this specific code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a search like this, and I'm going to add this search to my stored searches. This pop brush window where you have the opportunity to create whatever kind of research folders you feel like creating. And I'm going to put this one in my coding issues folder. You create a folder just by naming it right in this box. And then you need to search. There it is. And I'm going to set this up to be done every single week. I'll do it every single day if I want, and then I'm going to store the search. So what this is, today, when I search, I only found six documents. But I came in and manually made this search next week, there would be six, seven, eight, nine new documents. MediRegs is going to ship me the new, new documents. Put another way, MediRegs is going to go to my daily email alert, click on all the new documents, read them, and see if 20604 appears on that page. If it does, it's going to send me that page. So I've now set up a beautiful filter to catch that information going forward. Where I can see that search is on the Welcome tab, 
under Taylor Page, the next most important thing is setting up stored searches, so that's where we put it. So you set it up when you do a search, but you manage it from, from that screen, and you can see I've been using Medirags for a decade. So I've got a ton of searches set up and a bunch of different folders, and I've got all these different searches, but here's the one I just set up for you. And I did it again or edit it on, on the fly. So let me edit it. Um, 20604 means arthrocentesis. And I'm going to stay on top of this issue. Not the published document actually says the CPT code or just discusses the procedure in general. So I can put an or here and I can search for multiple terms. Also, I noticed that 20604 is an add on code for 20603. So I could search for any of these two codes or the word arthrocentesis, or maybe I have some other fancy way of saying this. So that's what advanced search lets you do. It lets you be very robust, and we're happy to help you with this. But this is my favorite way to set up a search. I do of, and I list a bunch of CPT codes that are in the same family, or of, and then I search for what you and I call it as normal people, like what the doctor is going to write down or what's going to show up in the EMR describing the service or procedure. And then I will often do an or and an all of or a phrase search for the official language that shows up in the CPT long description. Just I notice that sometimes CPT codes describe services with very different words than what the doctors use. So you have three boxes, one for codes, one for normal English, and one for technical language. And then to search, and the most for you, for building coders, the most important places to search for this would be guide coders. Like I go ahead and click on the OIG because something interesting might show up there. And your MAC, maybe your state Medicaid program. So I'm only searching in four places. Much precise. Notice I searched for two codes, I got more results. Notice when I added a keyword, I got more results. That's typical. And you can see very precise results, really arthrocentesis. And let me say this. If you find an old CPT assistant article that discusses their intention for arthrocentesis, even if it mentions brand new code, you can often backwards apply it. So we have um, this word, arthrocentesis, appearing in a coding clarification in June of 2012. I might want to go read that document document and see if I think it applies to this new code that just came out. Okay, That's the most important two features for using the Audit and Revenue Resource Center, and let me say them again just super quick. Go tailor your page and unpack anything that you don't want to know about. Turn off National Institute of Health and OSHA and things like that. Keep on. This is really your best friend. Guidance for for coders, keep on the Office of the Inspector General, and then on whichever state you want, remembering that we have two kinds of states. The first one will be what your MAC is up to, so that's where you get your medical necessity information, and the second one is your Medicaid information coming out from the individual state. So take page, and the browse content, and I would try advanced searching. Start playing with this. Start searching for some things and save those searches so that we send you an automatic alert when those words appear again in the future. And the story of the search does take a little bit of finesse. So you notice that on the Welcome tab, there's this button that says Send Us an Email. And I want to make this invitation to anybody who's already a user. At our call, click on that. Say, my name is Mary. I work in Texas. I own about Part B stuff. Can you fill in my page? And by the way, I work for an anesthesia office. So could you set me up a couple of example anesthesia searches? And I'll do it for you. And then you'll come in, manage your stored searches, and cheat off of the one that I already built for you. So you can always just click the Edit button and go from there. Yeah, Rayelle, and that's a wonderful service. And I just want to say to the users on the call, some of you are users and some of you are supervisors of other areas. Um, those of you who are in a supervisory role, it's subtle intent that you be the source of new information for your staff 
So it's very important that you monitor the Medireg on a daily or weekly basis, communicate these changes to your staff, and then circle back and as part of your quality assurance, monitor to be sure that they have incorporated these changes in their work. That's the expectation that our clients have of us, and this will give you the power to do it. Right. So I watch, I personally watch my daily email alert, and it often prompts me to know about a new thing that I then go set up a stored search for. So Medireg's told me that there was this new OLG action. I read that report. Well, let's talk about Ebola. Let's just use Ebola as a perfect example. Let's go to special searches, browse content, and what's up with Ebola? I search the states I have on, and I can see what's happened in the past. Kind of scary issue, and yet I'm not really seeing that much information. I guarantee you that if I run this search again in June, I'm going to find thousands of hits. So I'm going to keep up with that. So I'm just search and see that one simple issue, and I'm going to monitor for Ebola. Very cool. Check on weekly. Store the search and get on with my day. Now, here's a very cool feature. When you did your page, you changed your browse content, but you didn't change anything else on the home screen. So for some reason, I want to see what's up with the National Institute of Health. I know I turned them off, but I can search in here if I feel like it. That's very helpful in a couple of areas. On browse by content, there's an all 50 states section. And so I can add, go in, when I just did that Ebola search, I only had California on, so that's the only state I was searching. But I could set up a search in here instead. So here's what all 50 states have done so far with the word Ebola, including for who I'm not usually seeing in my daily email alerts. But I'm going to go and store the search from inside the library. That's where Medireg's is going to check it. So when West Virginia comes out with something new, I'm going to know about it. Just specific as a consultant and specifically as a partner head. Setting up all state searches can be very powerful because then you're aware of what all your different staff members are doing, even though it may not be your bailiwick or your specific area of interest. So that's very esoteric and important, and I'm happy to have that conversation deeply with any else. So really bang on that support link on the welcome tab. Tell me who you are, what your problem is, how I can assist you, and let's teach you to fish. We'll set you up before you uh, get yourself too lost. Okay, talked about daily alerts, the automatic weekly alert that comes out that's a review, and then your own personalized alerts that you set up by storing those searches. But I want to ask what Flory just said in terms of you just read a new document on Medireg's and you need to tell your staff about it. What's the best way to do that? You have a couple of choices. If you've read a bit in the we review. These links are quite good. So you can actually copy this link, just the control on your keyboard and paste it into an email and send it to somebody else who has Medireg's. And hey, I really want you to read this rule. And then to attach a document, you don't have to download anything. The we can review links are very, very reliable. Um, and they can just click on the link and, and send and get into their own copy. And by the way, um, when you click on a link in Medireg's and you look there, you might notice that there's a bookmark button at the top of the screen. It's very helpful to save a copy of that document because your boss sent it to you or it showed up in the What's New. You don't know how to get to it on Medireg's, but the book button means you can set up your own research folders just like you did with your stored searches and save that document. So I'm going to put this in my Piedmont folder. I'm going to call this the NCD index because that's what it is, and then uh, I'm going to store it. And then if I don't remember where Medireg put it, I can always go, welcome, man my bookmarks. There's my, you can see how busy I am. I have a ton of these. There's my Piedmont folder. There's my NCD index, and I can fetch it and get right back there. So we organize the content for you, I think, in a pretty straightforward way, but you might organize it very differently, and that's what bookmarking lets you do. And it shows up at the top of every single document. So anytime you found something useful, go ahead and bookmark it. Right. If people are on different iterations, if the supervisor is on the full audit resource 
center and yeah. their workers are just on the coding center. Will the types of links work? So that's why I do it off of week in review. Okay. If regular what's new and you hover over that, that link, if you look in the address that appears at the bottom of my screen, the name ARRC shows up in there. So it's expecting to drop me into this product. And so okay. these are a little bit problematic. But the okay. week in review is universal. Everybody gets okay. the same week in review. So that's okay. the best place to save copy links from. You have okay. other alternatives. So again, I'm going to pick a document. And let's look at these safety alerts. From, Medi from FDA, let's go into a specific one. This is a new document and I want to let my pharmacy know about it. Um, the other option I have is to print a copy of it and save it to my hard drive. Sometimes when we've landed in a document in the MediReg system, we've searched, then the search term is highlighted and that can be quite irritating to look at when you want to print that document. So the print a button gives you a naked, clean copy of the document. There's no graphics at the top or the bottom, uh, super clean text, and then just save it or print it. And I'm quite certain that your PC have some sort of print to PDF feature like mine does, and that's what I typically do. I hit the printable button, get the clean copy, and then I right-click and I either save as a PDF or I print as a PDF. Now, I have one very important best practice advice for you. The document is here, but that sometimes can be quite confusing because with Medicare, they have like the date it was published, the date it's implemented, the date it was effective, and that's quite confusing. Whenever I save a document from MediRegs onto my hard drive to share with another person, I put today's date in the title of the file. So I'm call this uh, e a ban safety alert and then I'll say 2014-10-14 and that way when I it to somebody they don't have any magical thinking next January that this is an up-to-date document. They know that it was captured on this date and then if I can read the dates that appear on that screen. So that's the second alternative is you send a link from Week, week in Review or you can just hit the printable button and save a copy of it to your hard drive and then we'll notice that very often the documents that you're seeing in MediRegs, let me look at a transmittal, for instance. Those are PDFs anyway. So I just want to show you what that looks like. Let's find out about this PDF document, and it's a really big job aid for Medi Medicare, and you want your staff to read this job aid. When you open up a PDF document, the printable button is missing. Um, what you want to do is your hard your web browser has some sort of Adobe thing, which they've probably locked out of your way. So if you notice as I hover down here, this little gray bar pops up, and there are a print and a save feature. So I will save this document. And again, you need to give it a name because we give it a stupid name. We call it Fetch Doc, which doesn't really mean anything to you. So I would say this is J A six eight seven zero, and I would say today's date. And that's important because we know that quite frequently EMS will issue a MedLearns Matters article and then reissue it with an override. So say his date in that document name. And then you can just e email the document to your, your staff members. So those are a couple of nice choices for you. Now for your own purposes, bookmark the document using MediRegs so that you can get back to it again in the future. Any questions about that? All right. So very important customizations. We tailor a page to get rid of content that we don't want in our daily we alert and our searches. We search for some things that really matter to us and hit that I'm going to store this now so that MediRegs is reading the what's new and promoting up to a special stored search alert those documents that contain the words we're looking for. And we found a few documents that we liked. We tried bookmarking them or copying a link to send to a colleague, or um, saving to our hard drive to attach as an email. And I know Tina has talked to you about this. I'll just mention that many, many, many other organizations use a couple of our comply track tools to specifically send out uh, attachments and notice yeah. who's read and who's attested to the fact that they've read and commented back. 
I'm not going to talk to you about today, but it's an option if you choose it. Well, for, for the purpose of this other group, I want you to know that we are getting that supply track tool, which is called Survey Manager. And, okay. um, and we really uh, send it and tracking responses on their documents, just as Alan is going to keep the attendance list for me so that I'll know who needs the reporting, who's should using the tool. And um, we'll continue to provide support, but also accountability for using this, this tool. Okay. I suggest that when you get up and running, um, mm -hmm. I note of this on my own notes. I uh, work with Chris Backus. He is outstanding at showing people that workflow between I know something new happened on MediRegs and now I want to send out to my staff members. Okay. We've done a number Excellent. of webinars on that. Okay. Um, our narration is actually going to have a button in the document for you to do this from, but we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. okay. So let's on to coding and billing because that was a whole lot of stuff about alerts. And really the reason why you're using the coding suite is because you're a biller or a coder, and you need an answer fast. And so all background things, really let's do some work. And the main place where you're going to do all your work is a tool called Code Explorer. It's the search box on the home screen. If you want to search the books and the libraries and the regs and the Medicaid manuals, you go to Browse Content and use that search box. When you're out on the main screen where you see the tabs across the top, this search box under the, under the word Audit and Revenue Resource Center is Code Explorer. And this is your favorite tool. Because when you're reading, you don't want to read a million documents. You want an answer. And here is Code Explorer. And just for kicks, I'm going to put in that new code and see if we've put it in the system yet. And I don't know if we have or not. Nope, we don't. It'll, it'll show up shortly. Okay. But um, atherectomy. So you have a concept. You come to Code Explorer, you search for it, and we get answers. PT and HICPICS codes, all the five-digit alphanumeric codes are at the top. But this is the same tool for inpatient coders. So your IED9 codes appear at the bottom with that familiar indenting. So let me just nail these and then move on because we don't have that many inpatient folks on the phone. ICD-9 diagnosis and procedure codes will appear at the bottom. They have that indenting. Red means... This is not portable code, either because it's completely deleted or more often it's because it's holding a place, but you're not, it's not specific enough. And you see the blue codes are the reportable codes. You see the Schwang description, and then anything that's blue is a link. And when you click on it, you go deeper into additional information. In this case, I clicked on an ID9 procedure code. I went to the code book where I can see all the includes and excludes notes. The ICD-9 codes work. The CPT code at the top, and they are going to give you coding, coverage, payment, and clients information, either here on screen or within about a click. To clean up the screen, I'm going to search for just a single code rather than um, looking at 29 results. So what can you put in this box? Keywords. Phrases, put you put those in quotes. You can wildcard characters. So if I want to just 37225, but any code that begins with 3722 and ends however, I can do that. And you can also search for a range of codes. So if I wanted that whole family of codes, I can keyword search that way. Those choices. By we're only going to show you the regular codes that are live today. But if you check this box right here, that will find you obsolete codes that have been retired, and there'll be a little note there about why it's retired. But by default, we just keep you current. All right, let's harvest coding, coverage, payment, and compliance information on this CPT code. And I'll slowly, and then at the end, I'll show you again quickly. So the, the purpose of Code Explorer is that you should get your answer in two minutes or less. And went through 16 different books, 50 different websites. Okay, so code first. Here's a short description, useless. Here's the long description, a little more useful. You might need notes. I like the notes feature because there's all these citations in there and it's hard for me to read. So I barely ever look at those notes. Instead, I just click on the little link 
think if it says code book, because they're in there as well. And they're laid a little bit nicer. Okay, I landed in the current HickPix and CPT code book for the details for 37225. Every single code has its own page in the CPT book on regs. And it tells you where in the book that code lives. So you're used to probably using paper. To get to code 37225, you would pass through the cardio vascular surgical section, it would have been green, and it would have had some fancy words under it. There are your fancy words. You just hit the plus mark. It's all in that pink section called arteries and veins. There's the notes for that. It's also in that blue section called endovascular revascularization. There's your notes. So check out. You got everything from your CPT book on the screen without flipping. And when you hit the printable button, you can print that stuff all out, which is very cool. So that's my coding information to start. That's all the stuff that came before the code in my code book. Next comes everything comes after the code and a whole lot more. This is much more robust than your CPT book. So because we've added here for you, there's a consumer-friendly descriptor and clinician-friendly descriptor. Those may vary different than the CPT description, and those are very helpful for you to kind of map what the doctor wrote down to what the right CPT code is. You're also going to see code flags, parenthetical guidelines, a family of related codes, if applicable, change history. You might see SNOMED terminology here and more. Let's talk about the parentheticals. You know, go to your book, right to the descriptor, there's an indent, and there's a parenthetical. It turns 225 doesn't actually have any parentheticals. So if you go, it's, there's nothing there. But there are two other code pages that have a code note that relates to 27 whatever code we're in. And but you have to know that to go find it. So what one is we'll show you whatever parenthetical guidelines exist first. And then we have them called additional parenthetical guidelines from associated codes. It's like a backwards note. It tells you that on the page for 35303, it's talking about 37225 which is very So now let me just click on there so I can show you what it looks like if there is a parenthetical. If there is a parenthetical, once you get past the descriptors, it'll say, here's this code's parentheticals, and then you might see additional. So you're getting a much deeper read of the book because you have an electronic tool instead of paper. Now, once you get past the A information, it gets juicy, particularly if you're a biller. Knowing that a code exists is great, but can I actually bill for it is really up to Medicare not the American Medical Association. So down here you're going to see type of serve information from CMS and the late data from the outpatient, ASC, FIE, and clinical lab and DME fee schedules. And in each of those sections you're going to see very useful information like your total RVUs, your national unadjusted reimbursement rate, any little special status codes, and then you'll see for links if you want to go deeper. So if you want to go see NCC edits for this code or the FIFI book or fires that might be appropriate because it's a physician code, you've got all those things there for you. So that was my coding and a little bit of payment information. I typed in 37225. I found the code. I clicked in the code book. And there's all this great information. Pretty quick. What is next? And I show you some national unadjusted payment information, but I just want to point out these two columns over here. You can set up our APC calculator for whatever you'd like. And then know that hospital's wage index. And I'm going to use that and show you a provider specific reimbursement rate. So I just show you what I just did there. Um, I went to the Code Explorer tool. And I found the dollar amount that showed up under the outpatient column, which took me to the APC calculator, and I set that up. Now, I can additionally just do that on the left-hand side under Lookup and Payment Tools, go into the APC calculator. I can choose the provider that I want. And any provider you've used in the past will stay in your drop-down menu. Now, I also want it up on the physician side, so I can go to the RVU calculator and I'm going to choose California. 
when you get to the review calculator, it, 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 it's admittedly a little bit complex because they fired all the payers and then hired them back again. And so you need to just make sure you choose the right information there. Okay. So I use Code Explorer. And I only have to do that once. It's going to adjust for the geographic locations and the, and the, that I selected. Here, I didn't properly set up the APC one. It's still adjusting to national. To get the idea. So there's coding, and there's my payment. And when you go into the payment calculators, you get a lot more, more detail. Um, the RVUs and the, and the modifiers that you're allowed to use, and whether or not this is subject to any kind of special discounting, and, and so on and so forth. You're also going to get an NCCI link here. NCCI is different for hospital and physician. So you're going to see the NCCI link in two places. Under this column, you've got the NCCI link. And when you go to the code book, and you scroll down to the payment section, there's also an NCCI link. They do exactly the same thing. They take to the National Correct Coding Policy Manual book and show you all the edits associated with this code. Right? So the column one and the column two, and it's a pretty big list for most codes. So I'm going to show you an alternative view to that in a minute. If you prefer to just look up NCCI edits for a specific claim rather than all the edits for a given code. But I just wanted to, that's kind of coding, so I wanted to show you that. So I got my thing, I got my payment. My next question is coverage. Now, remember when I tailored my page and I only left California on? This link is now magic. It only searches California. California doesn't have this code on any of its local coverage determinations, so I got no search results. Let me just show you what happened if I had a code that, that did have LCDs. You'd get a nice little list like this. Noradian has multiple policies using the word 71010, and I can pick Part A or Part B and get my policy. Now, pay attention to whether or not it's the active policy or the archived policy. And um, usually the most recent one at the top will be the active. That also appears, those words also appear up here. And it contains the entire LCD, the same stuff you would get from the CMS website, only better because the codes are hyperlinked and it's all spelled out in one simple page. So I've got my codes that support medical necessity, my CPT codes. Up at the top, I've got this national coverage policy descriptor. I've got plain English, indications and limitations of coverage. So it's everything that you need. So it was pretty cool. I went coding, coverage, and payment all from one screen. And then the last place I check before I think I'm done researching a code is this guidance link. It's going to search the code book, the transmittal, the, Medicare ma the key Medicare manual, CPT assistance, CPT changes. It also might find me some other little juicy bits like um, if this code has a medically unlikely edit, the max number of units that I would bill for 37225 is two a day. That's good to know. It's going to find me CPT assistant articles. Any of those here? Yep, there's five or four. And there they are, typically in reverse chronological order. And so you can see that actually contains the CPT code. That's why I'm finding it. It's going to find CPT changes and insider's view. Let me tell you what that is. The insider is basically a copy of the CPT professional edition every year since 2000, but it's only the pages that have changes. So that's really important. I see in 2011 there was a change. And I can actually click in there to read what that change was and see the rationale. Then I see there was a change in 2013. I don't see entry for 2012, which means there were no changes that year. So whatever was true in 2011 stayed true in 2012 until the shift happened in 2013. There you have a sense of why, of what that, the, that search result looks like. One other thing I want to point out, when you click into a document on MediReg that's a PDF, we can't like give you that first match button and highlight your search terms. So you're going to have to use Adobe's match search box, which you can invoke. So here comes this PDF document. This is a big one, so it's taking a second to load. I apologize for the delay. Well, anyway, you're going to control F. That's going to open up your very own little inside Adobe search box. 
and um, let you search within that document to find the first occurrence of that word that you just searched for. That would have to page through everything. All right, so let, let's think about that. I came to Code Explorer, I'm looking at a bill, uh, writing a bill, or I'm looking at the electronic health record, and the service was atherectomy, and I don't know anything else. So I come in here, I search for atherectomy, I read these descriptions, and I realize, oh, actually it was unilateral. Let me add that word. And then I get much more precise results. I'm um, part B. So I'm going to look over here on the right at the physician fee schedule. I can hover over some of these cool little items and see what, what's what before I even go into the calculator. I can use this tool to hone in on a payable code that's appropriate based on the long description. So I've decided this is my code. Now I need to make sure I know about coding coverage payment and everything else. So coding is in the code book. Very quick read there. Uh, make sure there's no problems. There's my, my code guidelines, my related codes. Um, it's billable under ASC. Good to know. Done. Um, so want to know if it's covered. So I click on the LCDs. And, oh, shoot, I got nothing because my is lousy and doesn't like to issue a lot of policies. I'm going to show you a workaround for that. Um, I checked out the payment information. Like I said, I'm billing Part B. So let me click on the dollar amount under the physician fee schedule. Make sure I get jurisdiction, whether I want to bill facility or non-facility. Make sure I've got the right order selected. And actually, to be honest with you, this claim included a bunch of other procedures. So I can enter them now, and I can actually see information on all the edits that will happen on this specific claim. So this one is all always included in the global period. Mm -hmm. Bummer. Good to know. Et cetera, et cetera. There's the dollar amount. This one can be split bills with the 26 and the TC. And I think this one requires supervision as well. I could see that in two places. I can show this detailed view, which for my old eyes is awful. I hate this detailed view because it's, everything's so tiny. What I prefer is to actually just pop into the book. So this takes me into the physician book. And there I'm going to see all those nice coding instructions very clearly spelled out. I can see if supervision was required. Get back, get back on with my day. So that payment. Also, I want you to notice that I put in multiple codes, and it's yelling at me over here. It's going, hey, you know those four codes you've got in there? This is a code pair that's being an edit. So if I click on that code pair, I will see the code pair that's hitting the edit rather than having to go in and see all the CCI edits for this code and all the CCI edits for that code, there's my two codes. This is the problem, and I can fix it. You can invoke the piece in a couple different ways, and I'll show you that. But let's just go back to my Code Explorer example. So what I just do? I enter words. I got my code book. I got my payment information. I snuck in my CCI edit. I check LCDs. And then the last thing is I clicked on guidance just to see, is there an MLN Matters article I need to read? because Medicare has something special to give me as instructions? Is there a CPT assistant, medically unlikely edit, audit report, anything else, anesthesia crosswalk, anything else I need? So that's your, that's your best friend, is Code Explorer. Um, because your code is, I do want to be super, super clear on two very important issues. One, if you're looking for a local coverage determination for a code, and it doesn't exist, like you get that, my search found no results. And show me about the CCI edits again, because that was a little confusing. Okay, let's do the edits first. As I mentioned, in Code Explorer, if you click on the CCI button or link, it's going to take you to that code's index to show all of its edits, which I really don't think that's all that handy. Alternatively, if you're using the APC calculator or the U calculator and you put in more than one code, it's a flag, or you can just code pair check directly. We have this nice little tool. It's called the code checking tool. And just plug in as many codes as you want. As for my head, I do this once a quarter. I come in my eight, my, my 70 codes that we use most often and pick my version and just check. And so these codes are the codes we use all the time, and these are the edits we're always going to hit. Or I have a claim that I doesn't pass the smell test. It's got a CCI edit, and I want to know which codes are hitting edit. I plug them all in, and the answers are down here. So Ray, are you able to save that 
quarterly search so that you don't have to recreate the 70 codes you most frequently use? Yeah, so I'll give you a couple of tips. I keep an Excel file open when I work in Medirags. I'm okay. often copying and pasting out to Excel. So I keep this list of codes in an Excel file. But also if you look at the URL at the top of my screen, it says a bunch of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And in there, somewhere hidden in that, is all the codes that I actually just entered. So okay. often just copy this into my Excel spreadsheet. And let me just to prove that it works. I'm going to open up a brand Medi Regs win a brand new um, browser window, and I'm just mm -hmm. going to paste that link in, and it'll pop me right into the tool. And then maybe if I just entered this in January, I would need to just make it's it's hard that it's going to pick the October date. I might need to just change the date and hit the submit button again. Okay, that's yeah. a great tip for those supervisors on this call who may. Yeah. On it, on, on as Ray said, a quarterly basis. I would do that for the NCCI code pair checking tool. I would also do it for the APC calculator and okay. RV calculator. Okay. That can be a really good way to accidentally notice that a code got deleted. It can also be really, really helpful when there was a code that didn't used to be additionally packaged, but now it is, because like, the status changed from one quarter to the next, the R has shifted, et cetera, et cetera. So, I would okay. keep, keep an Excel spreadsheet. Here's what I would do. Make my Excel spreadsheet, make my codes, and then I would do four things. You know, put it in Code Explorer, save that link, put it in APC Grouper, save that link. And then, ready? Let's go to Browse Content. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Advanced Search. This is a real awesome trick. Click any of and paste in your codes. You can fit about 15 or 20 codes in the search box before okay. the search engine gets upset with you. So I might put 10 codes in this box or any of 10 codes in the second box or any of 10 codes in the next box. And so I'm searching for 30 codes at once, and that usually doesn't crash the system. And if it does, okay. because you're just too big, and then you can knock off a few codes. Start off and over for again. For that. So you're, you're both getting the tool and we're reading documents. Okay. Thanks. So I think yeah, the last thing I want to give you in the, in the three minutes that we have remaining is what is up with that your search found no search results when you're using the LCDs? Get to the LCDs a couple of different ways. If you're in Code Explorer, like I showed you, and you click on LCD link, that's in your state for that LCD. You can get there from the coverage tab. You can also get to that exact same search from the LCDs and NCDs under the special searches box. And I like this screen because it lets me go browse the NCDs. It also lets me go into any individual state. Or I can just use this, and that's going to search my state, the one I tailored on. Nothing. I hate when that happens. And it's happening more and more and more because I'll tell you what. As the Macs have taken over for their new jurisdictions, they've cut their LCDs down by sometimes 80%. They're supposed to take the least restrictive policy for all the states they're taking over for. Also, they don't have to translate all their LCDs to ICD-10, so they've gotten a little bit lazy. So what do you do when not getting any answers? The first thing I do is I go down here to all current jurisdictions, and I try again. My contractor failed me, but Palmetto has a perfectly good policy. So I'm going to go read what Palmetto has to say on this code and see if that offers me any guidelines. And it's the most important part about this. If you go to this section that says CMS National Coverage Policy, that's true for everybody. The first five, six links are going to be stupid. They're just like Social Security Act stuff saying stuff is reasonable and medically necessary. But at the bottom of that list, you will often see very detailed very clear instructions on where to go in the medical. What? Sorry, my phone just disconnected me. Can you hear me again? Yeah, you're back. We're glad. Oh, good. 
So in this national coverage box, for some state halfway across the country that has nothing to do with where you're billing, you still get these nice references. Okay. And true for you as well as everybody else. So when I am looking for a policy and I can't find it in my state, I search all 50 states. If that still yes. doesn't save me, I will then go browse, not search, but browse the national coverage determinations. At the top of the NCDs, there's this beautiful list. And you can sort by coverage topic, which is essentially like chapter, and you can find the policy that, that you're looking for. With NCDs, don't CPT code search because they don't put CPTs on their, their policies. You have your words to find these if you're searching. And also, some of these are really, really old and haven't been updated in a decade. And so the language on the screen is very different than the language the doctor is using in the medical record. And so browsing can be the last best way to find policy when you can't find it by CPT code searching. So search, find it in your state, you're done. If you can't find it in your state, code search all 50 states and see what that's for you. And if you're still running aground, browse the NCDs or call us for help because we love to find examples like that. That's my number. Um, I've All right. covered a ton. I'm going to do a training pathway that has click-throughs. And for you, just so you know, in our demo today, everything I covered is also in that coding level. I didn't start any time in the regs or the coding clinic or the more advanced calculators. And so this was, a, this was a similar experience to what anybody would have if they had the mid level. Mid level. Okay. Yeah. Um, Rayon, how quickly will the recording be available? In about 18 minutes. Oh, okay. And then if you could just send me the list of those individuals who got on it and stayed on the call, um, yep. then I'll know who to focus on with the recording. And thank you very much for these tips. For oh, those okay. who are on the call who are licensed, I um, hope you'll begin to really use your license. Those on the call who do not yet have access, please email me um, a after this and let me know of your interest, and I'll see what I can do to get you in at either the audit level or the coding suite level. Okay? Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.